Osborne, I'm asking you for the last time. Have you changed your mind? No, sir, I haven't. Miss Cross? I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry myself. But since you have refused to stop publication of your underground paper, Tomorrow's Times, as chancellor of this university, I have no choice but to expel you both. Would you two mind waiting outside for me? Of course not, Doctor. Dr. Pritchett, must you do this? I beg you to reconsider. Dr. Barnett, I suggest that you take care of your English literature department and leave my administrative problems to me. But this is not an administrative problem. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. The university has absolutely no jurisdiction over the students' outside activities. These underground papers are causing disturbances all over the country. And I'm not going to let it happen here. My decision is final. Dr. Pritchard, I've also come to a decision. I'm resigning from this university. Is everything all right? What happened? Well, I suppose you could say that I'm now in the same boat as you are. I guess you could call me a dropout. You didn't. Yes, I did. But we didn't expect you to quit because of us. Well, truthfully, I didn't expect it myself. This is your career, Professor. We can't let you do it. I wish we could go back in there and tell him we'd give up the newspaper, but... No, 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 you mustn't. That's the very reason why I resigned. If you go back in there and change your mind, I certainly will not. Even if I have to go it alone. Is your belief, Dr. Barnett? I believe in all the freedoms, Mr. Pine. Everyone has the right to do or say what they feel. And if I feel like calling you a kook, how would you feel? I'd be annoyed, but I'd still defend your right to call me anything. And you think that those kids who print this underground newspaper have the right to use filthy language? If it makes them happy to express themselves in that manner, then they have the right. And I like to see people happy. Regular Captain Sunshine, right, Doctor? Mr. Pine. Why don't you read some passages from that paper and let the studio audience be the judge as to whether it's filthy or not? What, read this on television? Well, why not? You must be kidding. <laughs> if I were, I'm sure you wouldn't have invited me to be here. I see you brought your friends. Mr. Pine, I've got... If you don't mind, Doctor, I'd rather not be touched by somebody who supports these unwashed pseudo-intellectuals and not only read this filth but live in it. Oh. I resent that, Mr. Pine. Tomorrow's Times is not a filthy paper. It's a free-thinking publication. And it's for people who think. Uh, please, let me. You gonna let him get away with it's that, Dr. Right. Barnett? I can answer him. Tell him. Tell him, Dr. Barnett. You know, a while ago, you made a big thing about freedom of speech. Now let them talk. And as for you, don't yell at me out of the audience. If you have something to say, get down on the dock and say it. Yeah. State your names and what you do. My name's Larry Osborne. Patricia Cross. We're the editors of the Tomorrow's Times. Yeah, you're the reason he quit his job. No, Joe, they're not the reason. I quit my post because... Yeah, I know, the freedom bit, Doctor, right? You know the trouble with you two? You kids have a little too much freedom. If you were mine and I caught you printing such tripe, I'd take you and... Have you ever read it? What? He wants to know if you've ever read Tomorrow's Times, Mr. Pine. 
Isn't it obvious I've read it? How else would I know how pornographic it is? You have no right to say that. He says I have the right to say whatever I feel. Makes him happy. So much for your rag, sister. Now let's get on to something else. Doctor, do you advocate the use of drugs by your students? Mr. Pine, people who deal in specifics don't answer in generalities. You have already given a specific answer in this. What is that? An essay you wrote five years ago. Oh, that. Would you like to hear it? It's not really necessary. You know, I know what's in it. But the audience doesn't, so I'll read it anyway. Just as the sacred mushroom, its derivatives, such as peyote, have served in religious ritual rites in the past, so does the use of D-lysergic acid diethylamide taken in proper quantities help to explore the inner self. D-lysergic acid diethylamide. That's LSD, isn't it? That is, unless they've changed the formula. Do you still advocate the use of LSD? Uh, Joe, this happens to be a scientific paper. Call me Mr. Pine. I wouldn't want anybody to think you're a friend of mine. Many researchers think that LSD helps to explore the mind. And if they ever explore your mind, they'll find a big, fat, empty hole. <laughs> LSD opens up new vistas and experiences to those that take it. I believe that every healthy person should try it. Doctor, you need a doctor. You're sick. My advice to you is to go back up to San Francisco and move in with those other animals on Haight Street to see what's going on. I may just do that. Bon voyage. Haight-Asbury district, known as Psychadelphia, the promised land of the love generation, the utopia of LSD, marijuana, and way out music. It is estimated that between six to 8,000 teenagers, runaway kids, and dropouts from all over the United States have moved in, making this area their headquarters. of these hippies manage to exist by begging and borrowing from the very establishment they vigorously protest. But those who do have occasional jobs share with those who don't. Golden Gate Park for a hippie love-in. Hey. into society. Someone to tell them right from wrong You better break away Try to be yourself Don't leave your future to Everything's okay else. so far Love? The gonna come and go fade. You better watch yourself It might be too late I ain't gonna be there With a broken heart I ain't gonna be there Thank you. And let them in. Thank you.
Success. Well, the front page looks good. 
Now, let's knock out that editorial, huh? I'm all ready. Uh-huh. What's the banner? Yeah, let's see. Uh, Barnett, uh... Barnett holds on with pine. Yeah, I like it. Uh, uh... Okay. Dr. Jonathan Barnett, who resigned his teaching post in the cause of this paper, accepted an invitation from the aggressive Joe Pine. How's that sound? Uh, this sounds fine. Read it back. Okay, uh, Banner. Barnett puts down Joe Pine. Hold it. Wait a minute. I didn't say put down. I said holds own. <laughs> well, it was obvious he put him down. To whom was it obvious? Well, everybody. Well, all right. Puts down. Go on. Dr. Jonathan Barnett, handsome professor of English literature. Handsome? Yeah. Didn't you notice? Well, I, I never thought of it. Huh. Funny. I did. That's obvious. Oh, sweetheart, you're not jealous, are you? Of course not. It's just that we're publishing a serious publication here, not a, a romance journal. You're right. So much for this uh, pornographic rag. Hey. <laughs> oh, honey, I, I am serious, too. But you see, it's just that I have so much faith in Dr. Barnett and... and I think that he, he really has the answer, you know, that we... I do, too, Pat. Back to work. All right, pick it up after the last paragraph. Okay. This, uh, love generation is indeed lucky to have found a champion in a man like Dr. Barnett, who... Hey, look who we found at the lovin'. Yeah, right in the middle of a snake oh, dance. Dr. Professor, Barnett. how are you? Here, let me take your coat. All right, Patricia. Oh, so this is tomorrow's times. <laughs> what brings you to these parts? Uh, deciding whether or not to get an apartment right here on Hay Street. Oh, are you moving out of your apartment? On the contrary, they're moving me out. They said they didn't want any drug addicts living there. Oh. <sighs> but you know, it's not going to be as easy as you think because this whole section is overcrowded. Yeah, the apartments around here have eight to ten people living in them. And some places even more. Harry and Mario and Bobby and Lamel live with us. Oh. Hey. How about our pad? Hey. Larry? Well, sure, why not? Well, I wouldn't want you to go to any trouble for me. Oh, it's no trouble, really. Sure, you can have the Mel and Bobby's room, and the Mel and Bobby can move into Mario's and my room. Or Harriet and Mario and Pat and Larry can move into the back room while we move into Harriet and Mario's room. I think it would be better if we move into Pat and Larry's room. Well, you can move into our room with us, and they can have Harriet and Mario's yeah. room. Coming through. Hooray! Hey, 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 hey,
and share it here among the hippies, as the English diggers used to do in 1649. That will make an interesting subject for my magazine article. How can they live this way? Look at them, how they dress, those stupid rags, the sandals, the beards, disgusting. The next time you go to church, Mrs. Agaccio, I suggest you look at the stained glass windows and see how the saints dress. Hey, everybody! I want you to meet someone. Come on, gather around. Come on. I'd like you all to meet someone, a friend, someone who understands us. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Dr. Jonathan Barnett. Yay! Thank you. You know, when I heard Larry use the words, a friend, someone who understands you, I didn't realize he was introducing me. I was expected to see the chief of police. <laughs> Not that I'm putting down the establishment. Oh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't do that for worlds. <laughs> After all, do they tell us what we should believe? Uh, of course not. I'd even go on record and say that they don't care what your beliefs are, providing they don't conflict with theirs. <laughs> and yet we of the Western world are supposed to be free people, free to live as we want, free to love as we want, free to dress as we want. given these freedoms? No, of course not. Society wants us to conform to a pattern which would make us all become vegetable. Well, we must not let this happen. We must not conform. And we will definitely not become vegetable. Yay! The establishment has left us a world full of strife, prejudice, and avarice. Not unlike the Roman Empire before its decline, yet all the legions of Tiberius, Caligula, and Nero could not still the ringing truths of the underground voice of those great dissenters, the early Christians. Nor could the voices of Moses, Buddha, hey, or Muhammad be still. Who's a clown, huh? So be it. That's Dr. Barnett. And we shall not be still. Hey, man, he's with it. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> we shall not be stilled, for we know the answer. We know that with the world the way it is today, we must love. Hey, man! <laughs> we must share. We must not harbor any bitterness, nor practice any violence. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. You said it, man! <laughs> love thy neighbor! <laughs> Hi, neighbor. He means you and me, baby. <laughs> Are you kidding? Young <laughs> man, you shouldn't do that. Get off my back, you bubble fiction son of a bitch. <laughs> I told you you shouldn't do that. Take the Reverend Spencer with you. We'll go on, I'll be all right. Come on, Reverend, hurry up. any reason for violence. Come on, Puck, let's go. I'd like to have your name. What are you, a comedian or something? No, I'd just like to have your name. All right, I'll give you my name down at the police station. I'm taking you in also. What for? Obstructing the law. Barnett is right! 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 Barnett Excuse me, but I'm writing an article for a magazine. Aren't you the two students who were expelled for printing that underground newspaper? That's right. 
Can you tell me exactly what this new Barnett movement is all about? We're all just looking for a way, for an answer, that's all. We happen to feel that Dr. Barnett's way, love, peace, free expression, is the right answer. Miss Cross, isn't it? I saw your picture in the papers. Do you believe in free love as Dr. Barnett does? I believe in true love as Dr. Barnett does. I think they should round up this riffraff. Put them in the army. Why, because you're too old to go yourself? What do you think of this new planet movement? Well, here's the thing. He said a lot that makes sense. And I think the sooner the world realizes what Dr. Barnett has in mind, the better off we'll be. Well, thanks for your hospitality, Lieutenant. Sorry, it couldn't be longer. Maybe the next time. Doctor, do you have a segment for a mouth? Dr. Doctor. Barnett, I'm writing an article for a magazine. Yes, I do. If you'll only give me a chance. Uh, Doctor, are you the leader of this group called Am I the leader? Yes. Uh, like many say, we hope to lead by being led ourselves. Well, exactly what is this new call about? What are you about? proving are you by advocating the use of LSD? If you'll give me a chance, I'll be happy to answer you all. My philosophy about the use of LSD is simple. I feel that you can be more yourself. You can sense more. You can widen your scope, which enables you to love more. May we quote you on this? Yes, you may. But those are more than mere words. This is a way of life. Be more, sense more, love more. Sure, yet. Let me help you with that. By the way, all those photographs in the banner, where did they come from? Oh, that's Elliot. Yeah, he had them made up. Elliot who? You've seen him around. He have a taste upstairs. Well, why should this Elliot go to all that trouble? Who knows? Hey, what'd you do, Larry? Raid a bookshop? They're uh, Dr. Barnett's. You must be Elliot. That's right, Professor. Well, thanks for all those uh, photographs in the banner, but it must have cost you a lot of money. Well, that's nothing compared to what we're really going to make. I mean, besides, the market's up this week. Hey, bananas and lettuce, huh? Well, great observation, Mario. Now, what gave you the first clue? You want a fruit diet? Oh, no, Professor. You see, we're not going to eat that. We're going to smoke it and drink it. Yeah, see, we smoke the banana peels, and then we drink the green gravy. Let's go bake those peels. You bet. Let's go. Yellow yellows. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as grass, but uh, it's legal and cheaper. Smoke the banana peel and drink the green gravy. Sounds interesting. Art looks mistrust, they let they must crush with indifference what they know to be true. Could this be you, my friend? Could this be you?
had a bad batch. Hey, Professor. I find it depressing, if anything. You really sell this stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah. Five bucks an ounce. Mm, it costs them about a quarter. Elliot, well, what did you mean about the money we're going to make? Oh, yeah, that. Well, the thing is, Professor, you see, I kind of get this idea, you know, like, well, these kids, they need somebody like you, you know, a, a kind of a leader, a prophet. Larry, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? If you mean Dr. Barnett's teaching should be spread, I go along with you. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. You see, the thing is, Professor, I say that, like, in your honor, we have a happening, you see? And we charge five bucks a person for Five it. bucks? Now you lost me. I don't think Dr. Barnett wants to be a prophet for profit. Do you, Dr. Barnett? Ah, oh, come on, Larry. Now, there's not that much in it. At five bucks a person, well, that would just about take care of the whole scene. Huh? Of course, now, it'll take a couple of weeks to set up, but uh, that'll give us just enough time to have your costume made up. What kind of costume? Well, you know, uh, something for the image. What do you say, Professor? You'll love it. Dr. Barnett will speak to us in just a few minutes. Right now, it's his wish that we enjoy ourselves. Elliot, are you 
holding any more acid? I gave you some before. Yeah, but I, uh, I want to get very far out. Alice is going on a trip. She's going tripping to the Wonderland. Going through the looking glass. Going down the rabbit hole. That's where she meets all her friends. The Mad Hatter. The Caterpillar. The Mushroom. And the Queen. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And don't forget the rabbit. The big white rabbit. Oh, make like a rabbit! And ask, where shall I begin, your majesty? Begin at the beginning, the queen replied. And go till you come to the end, she cried. Then stop. The first thing in the visit is to say, how do you do? 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 And now, some protest poetry. The time has come, the water said, to talk of many things. Of shoes and ships and silly wax and cabbages. Big cabbage and king. Who are you? I'm not sure. I'm not myself, you see. Are you? I'm the sacred mushroom.
wall. I can't reach you. There you are, wall. I'm Alice. On your little Alice. All right, Pat. Take it easy. No, oh, Alice. Alice. Here. In here. My enormous palace. I've been here before. I know you, palace. It's all so beautiful, Larry. It's where it's really at. Easy now, Pat. Lie down. Alice! Just a little, little girl. Little Alice. Help me. You're so big and strong. I will. You're my father. Help me, I'm so little. Help. He's after me. Pat, there's no one after it's you. It's snakes. It's the snakes. Get them away from me. Get them away from me. It's all right, Pat. It's all right. I'm just a little girl. St. Patrick. St. Patrick. Oh. You did it. You drew them away. I'm so proud of you. She's a big girl now. She's not a little girl. She's a big woman. Yeah. No, I... I won't say those dirty words again. I heard you say them to Mother, Daddy. I know you don't like to sleep with Mother, Daddy. Speech wiped them off, Professor. I mean, like it clean wiped them off. Thank you. And here's the thing. I've got seven more happenings lined up. In Lovins, in the parks. And don't be surprised if we make the stadium soon. Maybe like a uh, hundred thousand kids. Come in. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Doctor. No, of course not. Come right in, Larry. She all right? She's uh, sleeping it off. It's a good thing you got her out of that hole. Uh, Dr. Barnett, I've been I've been sitting up with Pat for over an hour. And I've been thinking, uh, this thing about the LSD, it, it's bothering me. Well, what bothers you about it? Well, are you sure? Sure that it's necessary? I'm sure it's necessary, Larry. Elliot, First of all, please, Larry, you of all people, surely you understand the value of its use for the cult? Don't get me wrong, Doctor. I'm not against the cult. I fully believe in the love and the peace and the sharing. After seeing what happened to Pat tonight. Hey, Larry, baby. It's not our fault she took too much and stripped. Elliot, just stay out of it. Now look, Dr. Barnett, we're telling people that the uncontrolled use of LSD isn't dangerous. But we know that any kid with a chemistry set can make it. We know there, there, are, there are people who, who've had panic reactions, uh, hallucinations, paranoid feelings two years after they stopped taking it. And here we are preaching the use of it. Are you sure we're right? Larry, if we believe in our teachings, we must use any and all means of propagating our beliefs. The end justifies the means. Yes, Larry, I am sure. It's, uh, it's getting late. I'll see you in the morning, Professor. Yes, good night, gentlemen. Larry? Good night, Doctor. Good night, Larry. Cool it, will you? Tomorrow she won't even know what hit her.
story. Hmm. Have you seen Larry? Uh-uh. No. Oh. Look at the door. That's probably Larry. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes. Does Harriet live here? Harriet? Harriet Henning. I was told she lived here. I'm her father. Oh, yeah, she lives here. Somebody ring the bell. Oh, it's uh, Harriet's father. May I see her? Yeah. She's uh, in this room here. I don't know if she's up yet, but just knock. Thank you. Professor, have you seen Larry? No. Oh, well, he's probably down at the paper. Who is it? May I speak to Harriet? Just a minute. Harriet. Mm -hmm. Harriet. Wake up. Oh, Somebody oh. to see you. Who? Oh. I don't know. Who is it? Harriet, it's me, Dad. Oh, j just a minute. I'll be right there. Hey, Mario. Mario, wake up, baby. Get something on. Put a sweater on. It's on. It's, it's my old man. Oh. I want you to meet him. Okay, okay. Hello, Harriet. Oh, Pop, you came. <laughs> you really came. Are you all right? It's taken me long enough to find you. How's Mom? Worried? Come on in. Hey, you guys. I want you to meet my pop. These are my roommates, Lamel and Bobby. And this is my boyfriend, Mario. I, I, I can't believe this. Uh, the filth! Is this where you've been, all these, these... and living with these... Don't say it. I'm asking you, don't say it. Let's finish the coffee in the kitchen, Lamel. It's getting a little stuffy in here. You had no right to do that. You have no right to insult my friends. Your friends? You mean tramps, don't you? All right, just a second, Mr. Henning. Now, you keep out of this. I'm talking to my daughter. You're talking to my girl. And I'm not sure I like the way you're talking to her, either. You don't like? I'm still her father, and what I've got to say to her doesn't concern you at all. Everything you have to say to her concerns me. Well, you... Uh, I've, you're no, just what? Uh, you're you. what? Mario, please, let me handle this. Let me talk to him alone, please, honey. I don't know why you bother even talking to him. Please, Mario. Harriet, if you only realize how worried your mother's been ever since you left. She's just sick about this. I'm sorry to hear about that. Get your things. You're coming home with me. I'm doing what? I said you're coming home with me. Now, wait a minute, Pop. You're out of line. Well, if you think I'm going to leave you to stay here with these scavengers and sleeping with that grease ball. That grease ball happens to be the man I'm in love with. And if I want to sleep with the man I love, neither you nor anyone is going to stop me. You don't realize how wrong this really is. Well, if my friends ever heard, I... Your friends? Your friends? Oh, Pop, you're funny. No, I take that back. You're very sad. Don't you understand? You're not even married. And we're not hypocrites, either. Like your generation of boozers who sneak out in secrecy to have their own little affairs. Up. Wake up. Get with it. You know, out there for a minute, I, I was so happy to see you because I thought maybe you changed. But you were thinking about me. But no, you're not even worried about me. You're just, just worried about your stinking friends and your lodge. You don't care about me or my happiness. Just yours. Leave me alone. All right, Harriet. But I'm going to get you out of this filth somehow.
for you. I didn't think you'd be up here. Hey, uh, where'd you sleep last night? I didn't. Didn't? I was walking. Oh? And thinking. What about? Hey, what about? Everything. Barnett, the LSD, the cult, you, everything. Why? You mean you don't know? Know what? What happened last night? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the trip you were on last night. Don't you remember? Sure, I remember. It's not the first time. I've been on trips before. You've been on trips before. So what? Pat, you took too much LSD last night. Yes, I know. It was beautiful. I was so aware. Pat, listen to me. You know, when this thing with Barnett first started, I was all for it. Believe me. I felt that all the ideals we've been writing about were suddenly coming to life. But now, this. I, I mean, what's happening now? I don't like it. I feel we're going to hurt a lot of people. But I, I honestly don't understand what you're getting at. Look, what I'm getting at is it's wrong. Barnett, the ass of the whole damn thing is wrong. You must be kidding. I'm dead serious. Larry, Look, what Pat, you... for your own good, put down the LSD. Well, that's silly, Larry. I can't do that. You mean you won't? Well, that's right. I won't. If Dr. Barnett thinks... The I hell with Dr. Him. Barnett! Larry! You heard me. The hell with him! And the hell with his whole movement! Can't you see that his whole movement is a phony scheme for his own personal gain? Can't you see that? Larry... When I left home, I left because, well, I had parents with whom I couldn't communicate. And I found that when you and I met and started working together. And then Dr. Barnett came along. And he confirmed everything that I believed in. Well, there's no question I'm not going to give that up. Well, I am. That's it? I guess it is. All right, I'll just go upstairs and pack my things. You don't have to do that. I wouldn't stay there, not with him around. Larry, someday you'll find out you did the wrong thing. And you believe you did the right thing? Yes, I do. Well, then you did. That's the basis of the entire cult. One must always do what one thinks is right. There are times when one must sacrifice something very dear. No, I really love teaching at the university. Now, you listen to me. You give Larry a chance to find himself and he'll be back. You'll see. Do you think so? I know so. Meantime, you can stay here and help me. Help you? How? Oh, you're a writer, aren't you? You can help me write my speeches. Be my, um, well, like my, um... Assistant? Personal assistant. Thank you, Professor. Okay, kids, hold it. Come to our freedom of expression concert. Learn the truth about free and true love. Next Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Learn the truth! Learn the truth about Barnett. Barnett cult exposed. Learn the truth about Barnett. Learn the truth about Barnett. Barnett myth exploded. Here, let me help you get rid of this. Thanks. Don't let your whole world be swept down the drain. For many weeks now, I've tried to show you a way. Be more, sense more, love more. That is my creed. Tell me, what is your creed? Be, Be more, more, sense more, love more. Read more about the phony prophet. Read about Barnett, the fake messiah. 
do I know the truth? Out of sight. Read about Barnett. Yeah, I can give you one. Read about the fake messiah. Read about Barnett. Read more about the phony prophet. Hey! <laughs> Burn these words into your mind. Soon these words will spread across the world. The Bill of Rights guarantees us freedom. Freedom to say what we like. Freedom to think what we like. Freedom to do what we like. Remember, we're a free people. This country is yours. These parks are yours. Feel free to use them whenever you like, day or night. trying to play a game here. Come on, will you get out of here? Hey, Whiskers, pick up your gear and move on. Come on, Come on this park's on. big enough for all of us. Move out of here. Let's Let's go. Go. Move over here. Damn you kids, what the hell are you nuts doing on our field? What do you mean your field? Got as much right to be here as you do. Not again. This is the same bunch that lost up our game last week. Yeah, well, freaks, that's what they are. Come on, come on, cool it, man. Cool it, man, yeah, cool it with this Cuba sugar and everything will look sweet. Yeah, well, you take it yourself, junkie, okay? Oh, what's the matter, man? You're afraid of a little sugar? Look, see? Hey, man, you got any more acid? No, but I'm on my way back to my pad, and I'm gonna get some more. Come on, Jimmy, come on, come on. We'll settle this thing once and for all. Come on, Jim. Officer, what's going on here? These kids, officer, they're breaking up our game. You clear them out of here? Sorry, it's a public park. No law against it. Maybe we ought to bust our head. But there is a law against that. Officer, do you mean there's nothing you can do about this? That's right. Our hands are tied. <laughs> well, our hands aren't tied. <laughs>
Okay, now, here's the thing. We've only got one day left to pack that stadium. Now, I want you kids to make sure that everyone gets a pamphlet. Everyone. Grown-ups, kids, hippies, squares, tourists, natives, everyone. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Now, each of you will get a thousand pamphlets to hand out. And don't let me find out later that you've been stashing them away somewhere. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, Bobby, you assign the territories. Right. You two take care of the bank on Market Street. You two cover the hotel. Mrs. You Barnett's? You should like it. Good job. Down to the mission. Okay, guys, you can set up now. You all set here? All set. Mario, where the hell's Barnett? Doesn't he know we have to rehearse? He should be here any minute now. Why aren't you getting dressed? We're going to be late for rehearsal. Will it be okay if I meet you later? Are you all right? Oh, of course, darling. I know you slept all right, because I was up half the night preparing my speech. Did you get it down? Yeah, I think so. Look, if you want, I'll stay here with you. No, no, it's OK. I'll, I'll meet you later. You're not nervous about tomorrow, are you? No, not really. This is the big one. If I'm successful now, there's no telling what will happen from here. Darling, you've made me so proud and so happy these past few weeks. Dr. Barnett. Oh, just a minute. How about a copy of the Tomorrow's Times? Only 15 cents. No, thanks. But, uh, don't you want to read about how your teachings taught someone to fly on LSD and kill himself? Look, what happened to him was unfortunate. But how many people get killed driving automobiles? Does that mean we should outlaw driving? Now, if you don't mind, I'm late. Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Knowing how very much you like to read about yourself, I'll make you a special price. Only uh, 10 cents. Don't do me any favors. Well, how about 5 cents? I'm sure you can afford that. After all, you, uh, you charge $5 to hear what you have to say. Look, if you paid me, I wouldn't read that trash. Trash? Trash, doctor? This is the paper you resigned for. Does my image come across? Oh, yeah, sure. Do you like the robe? Well, I should. I designed it. Well, I made it. Oh, I like it. I think I'll wear it a little while, Lamel. I'd, uh, I'd like to get used to it. OK, I'm ready. OK, folks, hold the music. All right, everybody, hold whatever you're doing. We have to go over the cues and everything. Hey, hold it down, will you? Dr. Barnett? First, I want to talk to the sound man. Well, that's me, Doc. Dr. Barnett, if you don't mind. What's your name? You can just call me Mac. All right, Mac. Now, there's one thing you must remember. When I speak, give me all the volume you can. I've got to be able to talk over the cheers and the applause. Yeah, I know. Even if it feeds back, more gain. Are the new sound effects ready yet? Yeah. Let's hear them. <laughs> OK, OK, that's fine. They'll never know where it's coming from, and laughter and applause are contagious. Elliot, you stay right next to him and give him the cues. Right. Now, all right, everybody. I want you to listen to this very carefully because it's important. I want each and every one of you to stay in the stands, well spread out, so that when I give the cue, you go into the chant. You understand? Yes, yes, of course, Dr. Burnett. All right. Now, here's the cue. After I say, live, let live, live the true way of life, I'll raise my arms like this. I mean, these sleeves are too damn sloppy. Fix it right afterwards, will you? All right, now let's try it. Live, let live, live the true way of life. Be more, sense more, love more. All right, that's fine. Thank you. You can make it a little stronger, though. OK. OK, everybody, back to work, huh? Let's go. We've got a lot of work to do. Come on, I want these pamphlets out. I want everyone in San Francisco to get one of these pamphlets. So let's go. 
Lot of work. Keep it going. Hi, may I help you? I'm looking for Dr. Barnett. Sure, he's over there. Dr. Barnett? Yes. Don't I know you? My name is Henning. I'm Harriet's father. Oh, yes, of course, I remember at the apartment. Nice girl, Harry. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. I can't it wait till another time? I'm no, it can't wait, Dr. Barnett. I can't? I've let it wait too long as it is. Very well, what is it? Well, I need your help, Dr. Barnett. So do a lot of others. Harriet's mother's worried sick about her. And you've got to tell my daughter she's got to come home with me. I appreciate your feelings, Mr. Henning, but I'm afraid I can't do that. What do you mean you can't? How can you expect me to tell someone to do something they don't want to do when I preach exactly the opposite? I'm sorry, Mr. Henning, but I'm afraid it's against all my principles and beliefs. Then you refuse to help me. Mr. Henning, if you want your daughter to go home, that's your business. If she doesn't want to go, that's her business. Uh, Dr. Barnett, would you check this over to the station? What are you doing here? I think you know the answer to that quite well. And I think you know my answer. I haven't changed my mind. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. You and this excuse for a man living together like this? If it'll make you happy, we'll get married. Hippie style. Right here. And now, will you marry them, Professor? Yes, of course I will. You will? If they want to. Mario, Harriet, do you want to get married? <laughs> sure we do. <laughs> hey, everybody, do you hear that? The Professor's gonna marry Harriet and Mario. <laughs> How about the marriage music? I've never heard of anything so... Okay, Pops, you want to give the bride away? This is against the law. Okay, have it your way, man. Mario. Harriet, will you please walk under the bridge of happiness? You phony. How dare you make a mockery of marriage? Mr. Henning, according to the divorce rate, I'm afraid society made a mockery of marriage long before I came along. All right, Barnett, this is your fault. One way or another, you're going to pay for it. And then I'll finish the speech by simply saying, live, let live, and so forth. Terrific, darling. I still feel there's something lacking, something identifiable, something the press can pick up. If only I could... Wait. I have it. As soon as they finish the chant, I'm going to ask the whole stadium to rise and face east, towards Mecca, to the sound of the muezzin. You're not serious. Why not? Well, don't you think that seems a bit much? What makes you think you know so much about it? I don't know. I... Just thought it might seem a little ridiculous. Well, it's not to... ridiculous to millions of Muslims. They've been doing it many years. I've been doing all right on my own, and I don't need anyone to tell me what's ridiculous and what's not. I'm sorry, darling. Another thing. Why weren't you at the rehearsal this afternoon? No, I had to be somewhere. You, you had to be somewhere. Where did you have to be more important than my rehearsal? I wasn't going to tell you until after tomorrow. What do you mean? You weren't going to tell me. I went see the doctor about our baby. We're not going to name it after anyone. We're not going to name it at all. What do you mean? You're not going to have the baby. I'm not going to what? You're going to get rid of it. Rid of? Hey, do you know what you're saying? I know exactly what I'm saying. 
And I'm saying that this is not the moment. With the movement on the way up, the rallies, love-ins all over the place, we'll be moving all over the country. Who knows how it may reflect on the cult, on my image. Your image? Your image? What about me? Don't you even care? The cult comes first. Oh, no, not the cult. You. You come first. Look at him. The big messiah who preaches love and who isn't capable of loving anyone except himself. Not even me. And whoever said I did? Well, you did. The night you asked me to move in with you, you told me you loved me. There are times when a man has to say that. You bastard. And to think that when I first saw you, I had such faith in you. And now look what I had such faith in. A fake. Oh, yes, Larry was right. Larry tried to warn me about you. And you know why? Because he loved me, that's why. I'd like to see how much he loved you if he knew whose baby you were going to have. But I was too stupid to appreciate Larry. Go on. Go to the stadium. Make your phony speeches about love and happiness. They'll eat it up just as I did. All right, great messiah wants to get rid of the child. I'll get rid of it. I'll get rid of everything. Go on, get out of here. Get out of here. You phony. What the hell happened? She flipped completely. What are you doing? Leave me alone, Larry. It's, it's my life. What does that mean?
were right, Larry. But I didn't know what I was doing. I was just looking for a way. Don't worry about that now. I'm sorry, Larry. It's all right. If you don't mind. He gave you life to live in complete freedom. Only he can give you life. Only he can take it away. He does not condone violence. That is why we counsel love and brotherhood. You must not carry malice in your mind. You must not carry vengeance in your heart. For violence, malice, and vengeance are evil. No man has the right to judge his Hi, Larry. Is this the entrance to the field? Yeah, right in there. You must carry love in your hearts, forgiveness in your soul. For that, and only that, will cure the ills of this world. And our creed will free us from the dictates of a sick society. It's sick because they have forgotten the commandment, thou shalt not kill. Therefore I say, live, let live, live the true way of life. Be one, stand one, love one. That is my creed. Be one. Come on. Yes, he can hear you. 